Recently, something very interesting came up. I saw this post about each so type in the Fear and Hunger series on Reddit. As we know, so types are numerous, and in Termina, they are reviewed to work as a sort of in universe equivalent to our horoscope. Henrik, in particular, is the main source to credit for this, as upon meeting him, he would introduce himself and say his zodiac sign is the suffocated soul. And yeah, if you kill him, that is exactly what you get. The so types are something much larger than a horoscope, however. Souls are very important to the world of fear and hunger and its characters. Going beyond just acting as a personal piece of trivia, being involved in the completion of both of the games. Each individual's soul seems to reflect their past and personality. More than that, as it is explored in both of the games, souls are directly tied to the abilities of each character. For one of the better examples, the Enlightened Soul is a soul type that belongs to scholars and those invested in obtaining knowledge. Key individuals with the soul type are Najra, Voltion, Osa, and of course Enki. The abilities attributed to the soul type are only fitting. They involve magic and the esoteric, being capable of much more than the other individuals are here. This is applicable with all other characters. Another important fact about souls is how someone can claim someone else's soul by falling them in battle. In both games, you can use this to acquire new skills outside of your own soul's capacities. This doesn't mean abilities are exclusive, as you can find scrolls that teach you abilities belonging to specific soul types, such as Dash, which belongs to the Endless Soul, the soul type of Nilvan and Kahara, but you can very well also just learn this ability as early as choosing your backstory. Why is any of this relevant? Well, it recently came to my attention that, although there are various characters who break this norm, like the girl's ancient one soul, there is really only one major character whose soul type we do not know, and that is Lagarde, the captain of the Knights of the Midnight Sun. So I decided to take it upon myself and go ask Miro, the dev of Fear and Hunger, about this. And his response? Very interesting. This has, for a while, been a somewhat discussed topic, especially once I created a Reddit post to talk about this. But this is the first time, as far as I know, that this was brought up to Miro. And his response is very peculiar. Of course, an answer like that could be taken in several different ways. He points out that the possible answer lies in trying to claim Lagarde's soul. This wouldn't be such an important topic if Lagarde wasn't essentially the central figure of the first Fear and Hunger. A lot of people I've seen chalk this up to some gameplay limitation. But this tweet indicates otherwise, and I think the game itself makes that pretty clear. But what is the main reason for this to be so strange? Why the confusion? Well, if Lagarde happens to die, and you try to get his soul, the soul stone just does not react. In any way, shape or form, is it possible to figure out his soul type or collect it? And for a lot of characters, claiming their soul like this is how you find out what their soul type is. So what does this mean? The short and blunt answer is that we don't know, of course. But the idea that seems to be at play here, judging from what we see in the game, and what Miro stated, and of my own opinion, is that it is very likely, very possible, that Lagarde has no soul whatsoever. Let's go over possible counter-arguments to this. The first, and probably the most obvious one for most people, is that if you recruit Lagarde, he comes with Leg Sweep. This would imply he has the Domination Soul, the same as Dars and Francois. But I believe this does not mean anything for this. As I explained before, any character can learn skills outside of their skill tree. With Dash, in the first game, and for example, 
Marco being able to learn steel from the decrepit soul skill tree of Caligura and learn Karen's lockpick from the endless soul skill tree. So it would seem you can have aspects of other different souls, even if it's not your own. Lagarde being a natural leader feeds into the domination soul well, but if he simply had the domination soul, why is it that it's not obtainable? That's because he does it. He simply has a part of the aspect of the domination as part of his character. There are a myriad of interesting things to note about Lagarde. One of the first and most obvious ones is his seeming resistance to having his mind twisted. He's the only party member, besides ghouls and skeletons which are dead, to be able to fully resist the sword miasma, noting its influence but keeping it in check. This could be due to a lot of things, most definitely his status as a special man, so to speak, as he is the prophesized one. The prophecy is likely at the heart of why he would, well, have no soul. In this case, I would think that the miasma has nothing to bend, no soul to twist. Despite his own questionable morality, this void inside of him could not be manipulated. As the prophesied one, something about his nature is bound to be different in some way. We can observe that every single new god has a different soul type, each corresponding to one of the main protagonists. These souls are comparable and in a way equal, as you normally go slay the new gods to get their souls so you can enter the golden temple, but you can also just kill and claim the souls of the other playable characters and they serve just fine. Lagarde as a new god is noted in ending C2 to not just be a mere man ascended into godhood, or rather something else entirely. That being the specific wording used, what could this possibly mean for him? He's a new god, but as far as we know, serves no direct set purpose. In the first Fear and Hunger, the four new gods each correspond to one of the soul types of the protagonists. In Termina, we have the Tainted One, Radiating One, and Heartless One. They all have titles and soul types bound to them. Radiant being Samaria's soul type, and Tainted being Marco's, though the Heartless One goes unseen in the game. The Yellow King of Madness has no such title, nothing that hints at any specific soul type or set purpose. He was simply the Yellow King, now the Kaiser. What sort of role does he play? Some people have speculated that Lagarde could be an artificial human much like Omir was implied to be in his second backstory where he was created by Vitruvia, an entity responsible for designing of the human body in the name of Sylvian. This would mean he would have been put in our world by Vitruvia to serve a grander purpose which could explain his lack of a soul, though that would be strange as humans were created by Sylvian and Vitruvia, allegedly, and they all seem to have a soul. More than that, why would Vitruvia who is related to the old gods, push for Lagarde's ascension as a new god. Wouldn't their agenda not favor the old gods instead? It could also be possible that Lagarde lost his original soul through a stay at the dungeon, as it's known to twist and torture its inhabitants. But I find that to also be unlikely. If something as weak and frail as the girl managed to keep hers, or it could be that Nuvin, the Endless One, could have done something to his soul when she united with Lagarde and birthed the girl, and whatever she did to him made him devoid of his soul. She does seem to be aware of his role and has an interest in the prophecy. Some community members have noted the perspective that just because you cannot get his soul doesn't mean he doesn't have a soul. But that too, I would argue is strange at the very least. You can easily collect the ancient one soul from the little girl's body, which is a soul of a being to be an ascended god. So a being on par with the old gods, but not his? The only time Lagarde's soul is directly mentioned is by himself in his speech before he sits on the golden throne, where he explains his need to rise above mere kings and queens to bring ultimate change to the world and bring forth a new era. He clarifies his argument explaining that would it not be best to save the lives of the many, of civilians and soldiers alike, who die in the waging of war, 
to instead let only one lone soul succumb to the dark to taint themselves. This is him referring to himself, of course. He means to sacrifice himself, like a martyr, to become something else and rise to power through godhood. He mentions the word taint in this context, which happens to be a soul type, the tainted soul, which we later see in Termina, the soul of Marco and the tainted one, but of course this could not be the soul or could not be the case or else you would just be able to collect the tainted soul from his body and Marco has the tainted soul without ever sitting in some sort of otherworldly magical golden seating. Of course, the way you're supposed to interpret this is him sacrificing himself. What I think he means by his dialogue is pretty obvious. He's simply referring to taking in the dark truths of the world into himself, into his mind and body, and not necessarily referring to his soul. So much so, it's very likely Lagarde, if he truly has or does not have a soul, wouldn't even know about any of this. His knowledge of the esoteric is very limited. He's studied, for sure, but ultimately all the surprises of the dungeon are new to him as well. One interesting characteristic of the Yellow King is that, as described in ending C2, luck and fortune seem to be in his favor, where it states, it's almost as if the gods themselves were on his side. This even references the Coin of Judgment, an item that lets you cheat luck and increase your odds in many occasions. Other than this, he's described as being colored by the hues of the two Mahabre, the green hue. This and his descriptions of being something else entirely all hint at him being above than just a new god. His involvement in Termina much confirms this. His ascension was obscured by that of the god in Fear and Hunger, but in the present day he's grounded and heavily involved in humanity and its politics much more than the other new gods. Having taken the role of the Kaiser to the centuries where he has lived, he has the understanding that he was delusional in his younger self and his schemes and now pursues to create logic. It is still possible the guard, now the Kaiser, is still being used in some grander, incomprehensible scheme, perhaps by whoever created him, if we run with that theory, but either way, we don't really know. And, for my opinion, considering his importance to the larger scale of things, the prophecy and his possible origins, the inability to loot his soul with the soul stone, resisting the miasma and with leg sweep addressed, I do believe Lagarde has no soul. Miro has stated he wants people to get answers straight from the games as, as to not confirm any possible headcanons or theories, but this situation seems a bit different. And from the games, this is the conclusion I can draw. Whatever the reason, it is truly very strange. There is a chance this will be addressed in the future because, as we know, the Kaiser is fought in Termina's A ending and dissolves and disappears once he's defeated, which would imply his death. But if you're playing as Osa, Najra will reveal him to have escaped. If this mystery will be explained or not in the third game, only time will tell.